Tim Montgomery. What is going through his mind tonight? I think you have to judge it by the uh, content of the letter that he wrote to the Prime Minister. And he has been struggling for a long time with an imbalance of cuts that he's being asked to make. Um, huge parts of the welfare budget, particularly for pensioners, certain universal benefits like child benefit, have been ruled out of being touched by the Prime Minister and by the Chancellor. And I think Ian has, as he says, been a team player, tried to make the cuts on the working poor on the younger families and he just felt it has gone on right. too far now there's one thing to make those cuts for deficit reduction but as his letter said it's completely different if you need if you're making those cuts to fund tax cuts for the better off right. or capital gains so tax you're, cuts. you're taking the letter at face value i think we have to there, there may be other reasons but, but i think this letter is a lot of moral force to it and i think it chimes with a lot of people who feel to quote the letter again the promise was we're all in this together. And actually, it's working age families at the bottom of the pile who are yet again being asked to bear the brunt of austerity. Now, it's, it's, it's interesting because a lot of his critics, a lot of critics to the left who grown to not like him very mm. much over the last six years of, of his reign there, they will say, "This is why are you going over this one? There have been a lot of this over the last six yeah. years and you've suddenly popped out particularly just in the run-up to an EU referendum, which obviously made them suspicious it's something about Brexit. I think this is one of the... You could easily make the argument that he could have gone over other cuts, could have gone over tax credits last year. I think the difference is the use of these cuts to help fund cuts for better-off people. That really is a step too far. OK. And just the other just slight detail is this is the day the policy he's resigning over was going to be junked. It is just very odd to resign over a policy that you've, your government has abandoned. Yes, uh, the timing perhaps <laughs> wasn't completely <laughs> ideal in that right. respect. But I think the wider point of the letter, that cuts still coming down the pipeline are focused on the working age, young families, that is still okay. very resonant. You two, are you taking, Anne, the, the letter at face value or do you think there's something else going on here? Well, I'm taking it at face value in that I believe it is what Ian Duncan Smith really believes. I don't think there's any sort of hokum or trying to cover something up. But where I perhaps disagree a bit with Tim is I think there's a kind of permissive environment now in the Conservative Party as a result of the referendum and the very deep split in the Conservative Party, which goes back, certainly it goes back pretty much forever, but it goes to, to Ian Duncan Smith as one of those people from the 90s onwards who's been a great Eurosceptic. This is their moment in the run-up to a possible Brexit. So so all sorts of things that maybe would have just about held together, got patched right. together, like those family <clears throat> rows that once you start one, the others tend to, but, to come up. I think that's really what's yeah. going but on But there will be people, Jonathan, who say what he's trying to do, because the letter is so barbed, really. It doesn't mention George Osborne particularly, but it is so obviously aimed at George Osborne. People would say he's trying to portray himself, Brexiter, as the nice guy, mm -hmm. Chancellor, who wants to remain as the evil... Yes, and that's benefit. why people will find it a bit rich to hear Ian Duncan Smith suddenly finding his conscience and criticising Osborne from the left. They'll say, you're the person who, from that department, have been implementing these cuts, some of them very severe, you know, the tests for fitness to work imposed on the disabled, etc. Uh, he's developed a reputation as being extremely harsh among disability groups, and they suddenly find that now, of all times, he discovers that it's too much for him. Uh, you know, he's shocked, shocked <laughs> to discover that there is this harsh policy from a government and he's quitting just as the policy has dropped. So, of course, people are going to be a bit sceptical and ask that big question you always ask in politics, which is why now? You know, he's tolerated lots before, but now, three months or so ahead of the referendum, he feels it's time to really uh, launch an exocet at the man who is leaving the, leading the in campaign. OK, well, look, let's, let's just talk about the party and the government and where it leaves them. So I suppose the central question is, is, is this a full-blown crisis or is this containable to one policy over this benefit cuts, which has been junked, and one man. Mm. Tim, it, it, it feels like, just judging from the tweets of all the people coming out in support of him, the usual mm. suspects on the Brexit side of the party, it feels like it's just igniting something. Is that right, or is it going to just be a I couple think of this days? is a historic time for the Conservative Party. I don't want to make a prediction in a world where Donald Trump could be the next president. It's a world full of surprises. But I think the Conservative Party could easily split over this Brexit debate, not just because of the nature of the huge divide that it represents philosophically, but the way it's being thought. I think there is unhappiness at both sides at the 
emphasis that the Prime Minister is putting on fear, for example. Other people on the uh, side that support staying in the EU worry about some of the tactics of the people wanting to come out. But there is also a sense, and I think this is why this letter is important, the weakness of the Labour Party it does mean that the Conservative Party could be in government for a long time. And I think Ian Duncan Smith is saying, unless the Conservative Party is a truly one nation party that balances the cuts and the tax policies so that they are fair to everyone in society, it risks squandering that opportunity to be the natural party of government again. Anne. Well, I think that the difficulty with that is, you know, this is now, it's such a complex landscape within the Conservative Party. You know, when Ian Duncan Smith says you know, in the letter that he could just about have gone along with this if it hadn't been for the fact that he thought the budget was too nice, you know, to, to hire earners. Well, this is someone on the right of the party. Yeah, who I'm, traditionally, I'm all over the place now. Who's yeah, exactly, side where are we on? here? You know, yeah. we've gone a well, bit what through... What does right and left mean anymore? Through That's the, yes, another exactly. question. We've gone a bit yeah. through the looking glass, but that is... That is going to be a bit of a problem. I just feel you ought to put in some word of defence for George Osborne here. It's very easy on a night like this to say, you see what happens, you pushed and pushed and pushed on these disability cuts, and now look. But we know, we have had a severely rising bill on this, and governments going back, certainly to new Labour, have been trying but to Anne, find ways this is to get on top of disability this. benefits to fund tax cuts for the better yes, off. Yes, but he's really but hard. But that's a very partial view. But in 2012, with the Omni Shambles budget, it was big, big cuts to in all in order for the top rate of tax to come down from 50p to 45p. And he tolerated that before. Precisely. So instead, we've now got, to, we've got now a figure on the right who's attacking the figure who was associated with compassionate conservative, conservatism and modernisation, saying this is too much for me. That's why you feel it's actually about Brexit. And you've got this odd thing going on now, it is partly to do with the weakness of Labour, that both government and opposition are happening within the Conservative Party. But look, and this is the sort of thing that George mm. Osborne maybe could have got away with before. The trouble is, half the people behind him as he gave that budget want him to fail. They wanted him to trip <laughs> yeah. up because he's yeah. the leader of in. The party that's they're more fighting important against. Yeah. The party yeah, they're yeah, fighting yeah, against. Yeah, yeah. So this is now a big shot buy out against in rather than with the, than to, you know, Tory Labour, which is what we used right, to be. So is this, I mean, is this schism? in the party, at the end of the... Re is, it, is it repairable after the referendum? I mean, if the party can sort of hold it I together... I think it during. means that David Cameron's departure date is probably going to have to come forward. He is not going to be in a position, if as is likely he wins the Brexit referendum, he is not going to be in a position to heal this. Neither is the Chancellor, who is toxic, I think, on lots of these issues right, for well, so backbenchers. Boris benches, is going to heal the party. I think a new leader will be necessary to heal these divisions. But you're just brought a new leader early, from the side of the party early, you're wrong. Earlier I mean, in, that, the, that, in the parliament. Yeah. The precedent yeah. suggests it won't be somebody from either in or out or v highly identified with them. It wouldn't be Boris, because he couldn't do a healing role. I think the interesting figure here is Cameron, who has allowed Osborne to be the light rod and the hate figure of in Cameron meanwhile not even here playing the sort of statesman figure who right. knows if I he think that's not but a this, right this, uh, this attack goes to Cameron as well uh, as yeah. Osborne and I think you know, I mean you know to put up his hands and said there are lots of people who never at least recently have not wanted to continue with the Cameron Osborne do umbra at the head of the Conservative Party I really do think this is an extremely significant moment for them you know, it, Jeffrey Howe, the attack on Margaret Thatcher, these things come round, you know, and mm. there does seem to be a bit of an eternal re recurrence. It begins to look like the beginning of an end game, doesn't it? Mm. But Osborne in particular has had the most appalling week, hasn't it? I mean, this has just got to be worse than Omni well, Shambles. This is no, a it was actually all, is... He was getting all right after the budget. It was that we were it, all going through the, the day... boring budget, and now look. No, but I mean, it's... it's and, and it, but again, it, is it... Is it the, 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 what you'd call the tin ear, Tim. I mean, he just doesn't well, get that the amazing, a billion quid from disabled people is a lot of money. The amazing thing is how or? similar it is to the tax credit row that we had last year and the fact that he's repeated mm. it with an even more a vulnerable group, if you yes. like. People feel that the disabled are the one group, most of all, that deserve help from, That's from absolutely the welfare right. state. I mean, taking from the poor to give to the rich is one thing. Mm. But even the Sheriff of Nottingham didn't take from the <laughs> disabled and the sick mm. to give to the rich. A capital gains tax, that sounded so bad. Mm. So I think people were selling their shares in Osborne as soon as he sat down on Wednesday, but it's got much, much worse. You can't keep making mistakes like this as well. If you're the great strategic genius, as he presents himself politically, you know, his image has always been, 
I may not look like uh, that, you know, that popular a figure on TV, but I'm a strategic wizard. And yet he's done the tax credits, reversal, humiliating, uh, praising the Google tax deal, another humiliation, and now this. He, you know, he's running out of lives. I you, think. Your, line, your luck does run out a, a, as Chancellor. I mean, remember, he has been an absolutely commanding figure in this uh, period and very much an, an architect of, of the, the Tory election victory. But your luck does run out a, as Chancellor. It all this hinges on the Office of Budget <laughs> Responsibility. When there's lots of money, it goes well, his stock rises, and when there's... But he's hoist... No, it's not only that, Evan, though. I mean, yeah, you know, the, the OBR, I know it's, when I was, it's, it's now sort of, you know, got life of its own in national politics. <laughs> Look, it, it, he's hoist on his own targets, and I think that's something I think Tim was reflecting it there, that, you know, that absolutely driven feeling that Osborne has that he has to, to at least prove that he's right in the long run is now beginning to trip him up. Does this make any difference to the referendum itself? I mean, does this actually bolster the, 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 the leave camp or possibly even the, the remain camp? It, it does matter how much standing David Ham Cameron has in the country. He is the lead person selling EU membership to the British people. If his unpopularity, dissatisfaction ratings are rising, which they have been actually for quite a while now um, since the general election, if this makes a difference to them, every time he tries to sell the EU, people look at him slightly differently. So. It is not helpful for the but campaign to keep But I think that's where it's quarantined. I think the damage is around Osborne. I think he's the toxic mm. figure. He's seen as the hard-faced man. He's the one, remember, who was booed at the Paralympics. He's having another go at disabled people now. I don't think much of that yet rubs off on Cameron. And your sceptics seem suddenly rather caring people. You know, I think that's, <laughs> that, that's the other message that goes out tonight. We always have that. It's all, the, all we have time for. <laughs> Thank you all very much indeed.